Do your boobs hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Hey makeup friends, today I'm going to be sharing with you my Kaleidos palette collection and I'm also going to be ranking them. But before we get into it, I want to welcome you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Kara, I'm a 40 year old working mother of two, and makeup fills my bucket. It just brings me no end of joy. On my channel we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional f-bomb, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, I invite you to go ahead and subscribe. All right. So I have seven of the Kaleidos palettes. There is just one that I'm missing that they no longer have available. I can't remember what it was called, but it had all um, neon shades in it, and it's the one that got away. I do wish that I had that one to round out my collection, but it is what it is. So I have seven of them. I have gone through them, and basically the ranking is going to be based on the color story because all of these perform equally as well. Kaleidos is incredibly consistent from palette to palette in terms of how their mattes blend out and the pigmentation, how the shimmers apply. I have not come across a dud shadow from them yet, let alone a dud palette. So although there is obviously going to be one at the top and one at the bottom, that is not to say that the one at the bottom is a bad palette. I am basing this, like I said, pretty much just on color story. So with that out of the way, let's jump in with number seven. And for me, that's gonna be the Futurism 2, the Cyber Bronze Palette. So if you have not seen the inside, there is the color story that we're working with. Altogether, not a bad color story, and there are some definite standout shades in here, in particular, the silver and the red. These are beautiful foiled shadows, and I'll swatch them on my hand for you. So again, there's really no complaint about the performance aspect of these shadows. I think they are just so nice to work with. Basically, I can tell you right now, if they come out with another palette, I'm most likely going to buy it because I love their quality so much. But with this one, it's just the color story. So while I do like neutral browns, and I like silver, and I like red, I don't necessarily like brown with red, brown with silver. So it just comes down to the versatility of this palette. This is one that I do find I need to bring in other shades in order to make these ones work. I just, I don't know how to pair the silver with these brown tones. It just never ends up looking good on me. But again, and I'm gonna stop beating this dead horse. This is a good palette. It's just the color story is not my favorite out of the seven that I have. Coming in in sixth place is the Futurism 5 palette. This is the electric turquoise one. And I mean, it's beautiful. Got those beautiful blues, that pop of orange. Again, you have the mix of the metallics and the matte shades in here. And again, these shades are just beautiful to work with. Their mattes are so creamy and smooth and they just blend out so nicely. It doesn't matter if it's a lighter shade or a really dark shade. They're all just fantastic shadows to work with. But I find that this palette it's a little bit of a one trick pony as far as I'm concerned. There's three of them swatched out. I just don't find that there's a lot of versatility that I can use with this palette. I mean, obviously I can include the orange or I can exclude it depending on the look. I would have liked to have seen this really deep brown be like a really deep blue. And then I think it would have just made it that much more cohesive. But having said that, I love how the orange plays off of the blue. But because I find myself to be a little bit limited by this color story, that is why it's ranking lower in the list. Coming in at sixth place is the Futurism 6 palette. This is the Lunar Lavender palette. It is beautiful. I would have made a change to it, and I'll point that out momentarily. So there is the inside. The change I would have made would have been to switch out this brown and put in a deeper purple just so that it was more of like a monochromatic kind of palette and I think I personally would have had an easier time pairing a deep purple than I do with this brown shade in here. Having said that, at least it is a cooler toned brown. It's not super warm or reddish. It doesn't, you know, clash with these purple colors, but I think for my own preferences 
the deeper purple would have just played a little bit nicer with the rest of the shadows. It's not terrible with it, like it, it is completely workable. I just would have preferred a deep purple in there. Stepping away from the six pan palettes, coming in at fourth place for me is the Escape Pod palette. I love how versatile this palette is. So while you do have really fun pops of color, you also have a lot of more neutral options to play with. There's a row of shimmers in here and one extra one down here as well. And these shades are so pretty. These shimmery shadows are a little bit softer than the shimmers that you see in the six pan palettes. They're not quite as um, pigmented, I guess would be the way that I would phrase it. But that's not to say that they are disappointing by any stretch. They are truly not. But what I really like about this palette is that you can completely play up the colorful side of it and really just play with your makeup. Or you can make a really beautiful neutral look with this as well. And then just throw one of these shimmery shadows on the lid or in the inner corner and just have fun with it. It can still be a very neutral, quote unquote, work appropriate look, but you can still bring that element of color into it. And that's why I really love this palette, especially these two green shimmers. They look in the pan like they're gonna be very similar, but once they're swatched out, you can see that they do apply very differently one from the next. I don't think there's a wasted shade in here. There's no overlap. I think it's just a really, really fun palette that is also very user-friendly because of the inclusion of the neutral shades in there. Ranking the top three was very difficult and took me quite some time to figure out just how to rank them. I really was tempted to say, and then the last three are all tied for first position, but I didn't think that was fair and I challenged myself to actually rank them. So. Coming in at third, and keep in mind, these are just like a hair's width apart from each other. But coming in at third is this one here. This is the Futurism One Sci-Fi Green. And it's just, I mean, these murky olive tones, they're gonna get me every time. This black, if you are looking for a matte black shadow, this one delivers like no other. It is so incredible it really is and then the metallic shades in here are also very pretty so if you are drawn to the gemini palette from melt but don't necessarily want to put out the money for that one this one is a more affordable option that still has a very similar color story to it but here are the three shades that i've just swatched out here this black is so impressive there is no patchiness to it whatsoever and yet despite how intense it is, it still blends so nicely. I do have this one on my eyes today along with another one that we're going to get to in one of the other palettes, but it blends out so nicely and it's not one of those stubborn matte blacks that just kind of sits there and doesn't want to move. I have no complaints about this one at all. Now, coming in at second place is a palette that did make its way onto my top 10 palettes of 2020, but yet it still hasn't reached number one when I'm just looking at my Kaleidos palettes. And that's because I ranked in a different sort of way for each of these videos. So when I looked at my top 10 palettes, I was really looking at what are the palettes that I have been reaching for over and over again, for whatever reason, whether I like the color story or I like how they perform. Whereas when I'm doing it today, I'm just looking at the color story and what I think is interesting or unique or what I enjoy playing with. So this palette here, the Sashimi City, this is the Futurism 7. It is coming in second place here, although this is the only Kaleidos palette that made it onto my top 10 list. So I just want to address that just in case some of the more astute amongst you are like, well, hey, if that one reached your top 10, why isn't it in number one here? And it's only to do with color story, it has nothing to do with any sort of performance issues or anything of that sort. So uh, regardless, maybe that didn't make sense, but hopefully it did. Okay, Sashimi City is a very neutral kind of palette. I think it is stunning though. I love this palette. I love how easy it is to work with. And what really gets me on this one are the two duochrome shimmers in here. I'll swatch one of the mattes just so we can see it as well. 
but these shimmers are so pretty. One is like a greeny, pinky, purple, multi-faceted whatever going on over here, and then there's like this beautiful peach slash gold kind of duochrome. Obviously this is just one of the mattes here, but I find that these shimmer shadows can really play up the undertones that are in the mattes in this palette, and that helps to create a little bit of diversity for me. But this is just one of those palettes that I can just grab and go. Like, it applies so nicely. I don't have to put a ton of thought into it. So, for example, with this one here, the Cyber Bronze that has the browns and the silver in it, I find myself sitting there and staring at it and thinking, like, how do I pair these colors together? How do I make that look good? I don't have to do that with this palette. I don't care what I use in this palette. It's always going to look beautiful. So for that reason, this one's ranking at number two. Obviously then that brings us to the top spot and that is going to go to Futurism 3 Astro Pink. I love this palette. This is what I'm wearing on my eyes today with a little bit of the matte black as well. But all over my lid is the black in here and this black has like little flecks of glitter in it. And yet these little tiny micro flecks, they don't rain down on my cheeks. They do translate on the eyes. I do have a black loose glitter on top as well. So that is helping to play it up. But even without that, you can still see a little bit of sparkle on the eyes and it's just so pretty. I love the color story in here. I. I'm just so blown away by this palette because I can just use these four and have like a very, not neutral, but a very easy office appropriate look. But then there's also these other fun little additions up here that can really make it that much more dramatic. And I just, I'm just so blown away with this palette. I think it's so pretty. So there's some of the shades there. I think this metallic lilac shade is gorgeous. That's what I have in my inner corner right now. Hopefully the camera's picking up the little bits of glitter in the black. That blue almost has like a purpley shift to it. It's a bit of a duochrome. It's just such a fun palette and yet I find that all of the shades work so well with each other and they really play off of each other. So that's why this is my number one palette from Kaleidos. My husband just got home with my children and I can hear Bennett crying. So this is good timing to wrap this video up here. Oh, poor guy. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. <laughs>